What is up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing an analysis on RPH versus Onic PH game number 3, okay? So um, these are both the uh, PH teams that have a new starting roster for Onic. They have Hate now and they also have Kyrie from Blacklist. So Hate is from Execration, Kyrie from Blacklist. And then for RPH, they now have Hades from Signal Ultra. And then they have Benny Cutie from Execration. I really don't know why they don't put Reflesha instead of JP. They should put like Greed as support and then Reflesha as tank instead of JP as support. And then, you know what I mean? Because Greed was arguably the best support in MPL PH. And then you're switching him to a tank role, which changes everything. It changes everything. Put Greed back to support and then put Reflesha back to tanking. And I think that'll be better for them. All right, so let's look at the bands. We have Esmeralda who's pretty, he's, he's, she's still a common band and Alice is also a pretty common band in this current patch. We have Harith that's gonna get banned right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. The reason why Harith is banned here is because Onyx PH, they're actually, I would say, one of the first one that pulled out the Harith mid or Harith support. Harith support. It's not really a support, it's more of a mid laner, a mage, all right? Hate did really good against Onyx Indo with this Harith, and so that's why it's ban worthy. It's a respect ban. Bendera is also something that is ban worthy as well in this current patch. Benicuti is known for his Alice, so that gets banned. Brody's freaking OP, you don't want to get Brody as well. Right now, Barats is still open, who's still a good ban. Natalia could be banned as well if they really don't like handling Natalia. Barats could be a choice to ban here for RPH, but they ban Thamos instead, which is not so bad. Thamos is actually still underrated right now in the current patch. He's really good early game, obviously, and then late game, he barely, barely falls off late game. He's really good against sustain heroes such as Brats, Yuzhong, because he can build Deadly Blade first item and then he goes to his regular items afterwards. You don't need to upgrade your Deadly Blade to see Halberd. You can just keep Deadly Blade and then build your regular itemization afterwards. So let's see what Onic PH will draft here. I think Barats would be perfect here to be honest with you. They went for the Yuzhong instead. I'm really not sure why, but it's all right. Yuzhong is actually still a good pick. Yuzhong is still a good first pick and Dilar's Yuzhong is really, really good. So I guess no problems with that. But then for ROPH, Barats is going to be open for them, I feel. They pick Natalia and Selena. Wow. I noticed that teams really like prioritizing Natalia in the first stage of the draft instead of putting her in the second stage. Since they have a Selena, I think the Selena is going to be supporting and then Natalia is going to be like an offlaner kind of thing. I mean, obviously they made it work because they won this game. But for me, Natalia in the draft should go towards in the second phase. Yes, it's most likely going to get banned. But Natalia is more of like a hero that needs to be picked depending on what your enemy has. Yu Zhang is really good against Nat actually. And with the Nat being shown really, really early, Onic PH could actually counter this. Like for example, they could even do Xborg. Xborg offlane is really good against Nat. There's Akai. I think Akai is pretty good against Nat as a tank. Barats is still good. Barats could literally face check. So let's see what Onic picks. Oh, they picked the Jawhead. And the Lancelot. Why prioritize that though? Yes, Barat's got nerf, but he's still really strong. You could have picked another tank that could counter Natalia even better, which is a Kufra or Akai. I guess what Onik was thinking is they don't want to get destroyed early game. That's why they need like an early game hero, which is Jawhead and Lancelot. So that's why, because Yuzhong is a late game hero. Early game Yuzhong is pretty weak. They haven't even drafted anything I said so far. And these guys drafted Link too. They already have a core, so I guess they don't want... On the second phase, ROPH doesn't want Link to get banned. They want a core that could actually assassinate people, I guess. And plus, Ling is still really good. Ling is not bad, especially when you build Ling with Demon Hunter Sword. I guess it makes sense. This makes sense, actually. But for these, I don't think these make sense. They're just okay. Could have been better, honestly. Could have been better right here. I think they took the Yu Zhang to force them to pick the Ling. Because if they didn't pick the Ling here, it would have been banned. And then Yu Shin would have been forced. And then it's really hard to play Yu Shin against Yu Zhang. That's one thing that I noticed, I guess, or would guess. So let's keep going. Kadita gets banned. That is something that Hate is really good at. So that's good ban right there. They don't have a support yet. They should ban Yudora. I think Hate plays Yudora, does he? He can pretty much play any mage. So they could ban Yudora or Farsa for this side. As for this side, they banned Chu Tank. Chu Tank is an okay ban, but I would rather ban Kufra or Akai here, to be honest. Okay, they banned Khalid. Khalid is still an option as an offlaner. 
Kali doesn't necessarily have to be a tank. So that's an okay ban, but I think they should have banned Farsa so that Hate doesn't have anything at all. Or maybe they know that Farsa gets countered by Ling and Natalya. So that's why they want to force a Farsa. They're not really worried about it. Khalid is also pretty good against Nat because if Khalid sees exclamation mark, he can just first kill and kind of just clear the bush. You know what I mean? Clear the bush. Let's see what these guys will ban. They ban Lapu Lapu. Okay, no problems with that ban. Nobody likes picking Barats anymore, I guess. Lunox, how could I forget about Lunox? I'm freaking stupid. But this is a weird looking draft for Aura. They have Selena support. They're gonna make Natalia like roam around mid lane and then Lunox off lane most likely. But he's gonna play Yodora instead. Because he knows that if you play Farsa here, it's really, really hard. Lunox light form. Ling just dashes into you. Natalia is invisible and can literally kill you when you're stationary. And then Selena could stun you when you're just standing still. So yeah, this is a really good pick for Onic PH, realizing that, okay, let's not pick Farsa here. Kagura is actually really good against Nat, in my honest opinion. But it's really hard to catch Lunox and Ling, because Lunox has light form, Ling has ulti. So if Kagura ulti's Lunox or Ling, they could just dip and run away. So that's the hard part. But Ruby, all right, so Ruby. I think this Ruby is going to be an off lane. Ruby's still okay. I'm pretty sure she got nerfed a little bit, but it's, it's just okay. No comment. It's a decent pick. It's a decent pick. No problems with it. I have no problems with it. And there's the Barats. I've been waiting for the Barats. Nobody picked Barats, apparently. I don't know if none of these guys play Barats. Iaknu doesn't play Barats or Dilar. I know Dilar plays Barats. But finally, the Barats pick gets chosen here. So they have some form of tank. Even if they have Natalia roaming around at mid, they have some form of tank with the Barats. He's tanky. You know what I mean? They're not going to be all squishy. And for these guys, Jawhead falls off pretty hard like later stages of the game. Ruby's really scary late game. Kagura's really scary late game. Yuzhang is a very scary late game. To be honest, this is a good draft. This is a pretty solid draft. Like it's a balanced draft. They have early game heroes and late game heroes. As for this side, the same thing. Natalia early game, Selena early game, and then they have late game Lunox, Ling, and Barats. So they both consist of early game and late game heroes. Obviously very unorthodox or very weird pick prioritization, I guess. But at the end of the day, they still managed to build a balanced team comp for both teams. If you really look at it though, it's a pretty close draft. Let's look at the laning phase here. Let's see how they play this out. All right, so we have Selena doing fast blue with Ling, of course, because Ling needs blue. Okay, Jay was holding down the big minion right here. He's throwing it, so that's cool. And then Landstar is going to do a normal 1-3-1 rotation clear mid and then go for litho and then blue pretty standard so far from both teams nothing special litho gets taken by Kyrie. that's good and this is good from jp good information let's compare this natalia compared to Curtis's natalia from the omega analysis so far he's already doing good giving information that the blue hasn't been taken yet good harassment on that jawhead by the way they know that jawhead is pretty strong early game especially once he hits level two and the reason why they didn't want to commit to that I guess is because he missed a stun. He got the stun on Kagura, but the Jawhead was right in front of him. Well, look at that damage from Natalia and Selena. That burst, right? So good. And I think Greed ran out of mana since he put too much traps. I don't know. Let's see. I can't really see it right here. But Natalia saw that Yuzhong was overextended, as you can see in the minimap right here. So he wanted to go for a gank, and then Greed's recall got canceled. I don't know if he has mana. I need to double check. Iapnu is doing a 1v1 against Barats. And this is actually really good for Ruby because it's like a stalemate. Both heroes have really high sustain. But at the end, I think Ruby wins this matchup against Barats. Since the sustain, Ruby has more sustain than Barats. It's just that Barats is tankier. But right here, we see Jay is finally level 2. So he has Ejector now. Well, he has first skill now, I mean, the missile. Let's see what happens here. Kagura is still wave clearing mid. Nothing special. Okay. Uh, Selena misses the stun. This is what I meant by put Greed on the support role instead of, you know, JP. And then JP just get benched out, put Raflesha so you have a solid tank. So they don't always have to do this setup. Because if you look at this setup, they don't have a lot of CC. If Selena doesn't hit anything or if Barats fucks up on ulti, you're kind of screwed. But let's see what happens here. It just looks like... So let's look at the minimap. Jay gets caught by Natalia right here. Gets poked by Nat, and I think he gets stunned by Selena. Yeah, he gets stunned by Selena, so that's how they got the kill. As you can see, Selena's right here, and then he's gonna stun. Yep, he gets stunned right there. See, on the mini map, and that's how they got the kill. Maybe Onic PH didn't expect a Selena. They didn't expect a Selena pick from Greed because Greed is supposed to be the tank now, and JP's supposed to be the support. That's a good surprise from ROPH by putting Greed on Selena, but I still think Reflesha uh, just fits the team better. Let's see what happens here. Dilar is going to get dived by three people here. Very nice burst from Lunox. 
Yeah, that's a that's a kill right there. Should be a kill. Jawhead is gonna try to throw someone here. He's not gonna make it. Yeah, Kagura is really good against that. So you can see. Yeah. So very well played from Hate. Good job, Hate. But that was a good dive from ROPH. So it's a one for one trade at the end of the day. But I think ROPH came out on top because it's an off lane for support. So still, ROPH came out on top. Let's see what else happens here. Nothing special so far. The turtle will be up in three minutes. In, in yeah, in three minutes right here. In two seconds. And Selena has already put down traps for Vision there, so he's ready. Greed is ready for this shit. So he's nice. See, he has the vision. He's just gonna poke out the jawhead. He doesn't want to fully commit on jawhead that's level four. Smart, so he already has the information. You know what I mean? JP's actually playing a good nat right now. Look, if you compare this nat to Curtizi's nat, you see the information that he's giving? Like, okay, they're not doing the blue buff. So they gotta be somewhere else. They gotta be somewhere else, but he's doing the blue buff right now. So he's actually feeding off information instead of just walking around right here on the neutral section of the map. Obviously on the off lane, it's just gonna be a 1v1, but it looks like Ruby and Yu Zhang switch lanes right here. They switch lanes, they feel like Yu Zhang is gonna do better against Barats. Not better, but like, you know, he could sustain a lot better and he could actually farm where Ruby could sustain against the Lunox. Good switch, by the way. I like that switch. I really like that. Oh my God, Dilar, did you just get outplayed? By Kilo? Oh my god, Dilar just got outplayed by Kilowash right there. Wow, Kilowash, man. That was a big mistake from Dilar. That's not supposed to happen. As an offlane, not supposed to happen. He barely makes those mistake. Selena with the stun, so that's good. That's a kill right there. Easy kill. So you're just hoping for Greed to carry with the stuns right here, but it it doesn't matter. Oh my god, Hate actually does so much damage. Hate, man. Nice umbrella again, Hate. He's so good with Keg. How did Execration not bring out this monster? Hate is so good. What the fuck? He was not like this when he was in Exe. Almost a positive trade for Aura, but Hate just came back with two kills right there. Nice throw from Jawhead. Finally making a play. Jay finally making a play. Yeah, well played, well played, Jay. There you go. And after that, it's a 1 for 0 trade, but Iaknu gets caught here. What happened to Iaknu? Let me see. It's the Natalia that gives information, right? Right here. It's the Selena ward, which she's Ruby right here, and then Natalia is gonna know that Ruby's coming. Natalia silences, and then Lunox bursts with the level 4, as you, you saw earlier. Yeah, Lunox is gonna dash right here. You can see in the minimap. Right there, see? Right there. Lunox dashes, and then they burst out this Ruby. Lunox is really good against Ruby, by the way. But Benicuti gets traded afterwards, so good counter engage from Onyx to trade that. Ooh, nice dashes, Kyrie. Well played, bro. Damn, Kyrie's so good with Lancelot. What the fuck? Kyrie's so good, man. <laughs> I wish I could play Lancelot like him. He's probably second best Lancelot behind Carl. <laughs> Maybe even better, I don't know. But let's see here. Nice. Ooh, nice dodge from Lancelot. I thought it was gonna stun, but alright. All right, this is good from Jay for, for zoning out, but I think he might get bursted here. Barats is getting tankier, the game goes on. So it's gonna be harder for Onyx PH to kill this Barats. Cause who's gonna kill Barats except for Yu Zhang? Except for Yu Zhang, Lance that late game is not gonna kill this Barats. Either Kagura needs to burst out this Barats or Yu Zhang needs to outsustain this Barats or Ruby needs to outsustain this Barats. But if that doesn't happen, then Barats is just gonna keep stomping you okay so selena has a ward right here so they know that yu zhang is alone on this side of the map actually and i think aura ph takes care of that this is what a selena is supposed to do because i see a lot of selenas that don't put a lot of wards greed even though he's really aggressive as selena he still gives out that utility selena type of vibe and look at this because they know that information they know that yu zhang is alone they just burst him out but i'm really not sure why though it still doesn't make sense why is Dilar going for a Lunox with light form? It still doesn't make sense at the end of the day, right? Even if Lunox, let's say Lunox was alone at mid, right? Let's say Lunox was alone. She still has life form and flicker. There's no way for Yu Zhang, a 0 2 Yu Zhang, to burst out a Lunox. It's not really reasonable for Dilar to go in on this one. So I don't really see Dilar play like this for a while now. Dilar has been really consistent. And for me, actually, Dilar is the best offlaner in MPLPH, but he's struggling right now. On this game, at least. On this game, right? He's struggling on this game. Yeah, he's he's lacking. Nice, nice Kyrie uh, retribution and second skill burst. And very nice ulti from Kagura. Like I said earlier, Kagura actually counters Nat. Because your ulti stays with Nat. She doesn't have Purify, even if she's invisible. Almost gets dragged. Got a little bit too far. Still gets dragged and dies, actually. Lunox light form, that's good. Oh my god, okay. Kyrie a little bit risky right there, but that's alright. 
So it's a close game so far. Onyx PH is actually ahead of Gold because they've had more objectives. And this Kagura is 5-0-0. Hate is kind of carrying the team right now, I would say. Jay made one good play so far. Hate has been making all the plays. Lancelot secured the turtle, so that's also good. So far though, Dilar is kind of slacking right now. Kilowash on the other hand, he's been playing pretty okay, except for that ult earlier. Selina has been playing well, giving all the information. Jay is, what happened to Jay there? So Jay is gonna check the bush here after the Selena hit him with the first skill. So Selena knows right away that he's here, or RPH knows right away that Jawhead is here. And he wanted to face check here and he gets bursted by Lunox. Yeah, so this is the problem with Jawhead tank. This is the hard part, because if you don't snowball, it's really hard to tank as Jawhead. So, Jawhead tank is just okay. Kilowash, nice ulti on Ruby, but I don't know if they're going to be able to burst it. They are able to burst it. Kilowash gets a stun on Ruby, and then after the stun, that's when Natalia came in. So, it's, it's like good CC chain. They don't throw everything at once. They throw everything one by one. So, they synergize. Okay, Selena's stun right there. And then she's still stunned. And then JP silences right after. So Ruby cannot even use any skills to sustain. So that was good teamwork and synergy from ROPH. This is like a small detail. Oh, Kyrie, why? Why, 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 why? Keep in mind, five members of ROPH. And plus your Yujong is all the way top lane. Five members, right? You, well, they'll see it here. See, as soon as they see this, five members. Well, Natalia is still invisible. But Kyrie went in. On a 5v2. Oh no, if he. I think he might die here. Yeah, that, that's not a good look. That is a, the misplay. Misplay from Kyrie. Misplay from Kyrie, I would say. He was not supposed to go in there. That was bad decision making. So that's what I mean by Kyrie Lancelot and Carl TZ Lancelot. That's the difference. The de decision making. Yu Zhang is late to the party because he was split pushing, so that's understandable. It's still five members of Aura PH. At this point, they're just grouping and kind of picking off Onyx PH one by one. They're keeping the momentum going by just grouping up with each other and getting pickoffs every time. And then every time Onyx PH gets picked off, one member gets picked off, they do an objective, all right? Or they push a tower. After Lancelot fucks up the Phantom Execution, Kagura should be backing off now. But I think Kagura tried helping Lancelot by bursting out the Selena right here on the backline, but he failed. Yeah, he failed. He tried bursting out the Natalia as well. So no more ulti for hate. So he has Umbrella, so he should have second skill. Oh, he gets stunned though. What did he get stunned by? He gets stunned by Selena, I think. Let me see. Yeah, right there. Selena's stun. It's just greed. Doing greed things. Alright, so Jawhead went for the Lunox. Lunox doesn't have light form right there. That's fine. Very well played. Yu Zhong is so behind. He's 0-3, man. Purify? Purify? Ooh, such a late purify. Why not purify earlier? Look, he could have purified right after. When Barats, as soon as Barats ulti, you can purify. Right there. You purify that. And you don't get dragged in. What the, he did, look, he has it. He waited until he gets stunned and then he purifies after. If he dies, okay. At least he doesn't die. Like so far, I feel like ROPH is doing better on team fights just because Yu Zhang is so behind. Since Yu Zhang cannot rotate as fast, Aura PH is taking advantage of it and they're grouping up better and that's the reason why they're winning team fights. And they're actually synergizing their ulties like Barat's OT with Natalia Silence and uh, Selena's stun which is really good. Yeah, they're doing really good. Aura PH is doing better overall. No more Phantom Execution for Lancelot but then again Onyx still got the turtle. It would be okay if Onyx PH got the turtle here if Aura PH can trade this tower at least. This one right here. Or this one, it doesn't matter. Just one tower. And I think that's what exactly Ling is gonna do. Cause guys, for me, all right, for me, you wanna prioritize towers instead of turtle first. Fuck the turtle, get the towers, bro. So actually I think Aura PH won that trade. I would rather get towers than turtle. So they traded a tower. Okay, so now that Onyx PH also, also got a mid lane tower, it's in favor of Onyx now, all right. Earlier it was just the turtle, but they got the mid lane tower too. First tier mid lane tower for a top lane first tier tower, that's in favor of Onyx now. That's good at least, so finally a positive trade for Onyx. But the gold lead, look, it's only like 400 gold ahead of Onyx. Plus late game, late game their core is a lot stronger. These guys are a lot stronger late game. The only late game that falls off really is Selena. Natalia late game is kind of situational or just high risk high reward. Natalia doesn't necessarily fall off late game, it's just that 
it's harder to use Natalia late game because everybody's just tankier and everybody has immortality. But let's see here, these guys actually have two roaming items compared to Onyx, just one roaming item. I think what Aura should have done is just have Natalia do roaming item and then have Selena just try to snowball early game instead of buying roaming item. I think that would have been better. Because at this point, look, even if you buy two roaming items, your core is still behind. Level 12 compared to a level 13 Lancelot, you're still behind. So it's better for Selena, just not buy roaming at all. If you look at it, it like statistically, it, it doesn't make sense, right? Barats needs to ulti here since he's getting ganked. So let's see if Selena, look at the, look, what are they gonna do to burst out this Barats? And this is why Barats is still ban worthy and he's still a priority. If Dilar was playing good this game or even just decent, they would have won this game. They would have won their game. Oh. Hate. It's like the supports are the one carrying because they have the most kills. But it's true for these guys. For Onik, hate is carrying, and for for Ara, it's Selena that's carrying. Nice ulti from Barats again to avoid the CC. Look, what do you do? Four people are ganking Barats, and they cannot even put him to under 50% health. Four people. Okay, Kyrie doesn't have anything anymore. And they still get turned on. Okay, so now Kyrie is gonna start falling off. It's 11 minutes. Lancelot falls up. Okay, not really sure why he had to Phantom Execution out, but all right, he's trying to wave clear. There's the Natalia. Very well played from Nat. Are you guys seeing this Nat compared to Kurt's Nat? It's like not even close. So JP is actually a better support than Kurt, I would say. But I still think a better lineup for Aura would be like greed and Raflesha. So after that pickoff, it's a 3v5, so it's an automatic lord for ROPH, right? This is an automatic lord. The reason why it's okay to still get level 1 lord is because they still have a lot of outer towers up, so it's okay for ROPH to get the level 1 lord right away, instead of waiting for the level 2. Now ROPH, what they need to do is try to get as much outer towers as possible and then when the second level lord when the next lord comes up that's when they want to get an uh, inhibitor tower so it would be really good for ROPH to get all the outer towers here which is the first tiers and the second tier towers so right now they got the first tier tower here at mid so they got a bottom lane tower as well you see what I mean they're kind of focusing on the outer towers with this first level lord level one lord so this is fine after getting this mid lane tower what Aura needs to do is just freeze the lane freeze the lane and give vision on this side of the map and this side that's it and they win the game actually as long as they have vision around the map they're good they should win this game oh what happened there benny that might have been misplay let me see they went all in on a jawhead even though they never got the stun but yeah they went all in on jawhead very nice play from jay man the baits bro they got jabated. I actually thought they were going to be able to kill Jay, but that was a good play from Jay. Using the wind buff to dash over here and then using flicker to dash over here. You know, nice outplay from Jay. That's fine because look at this. Bratz is still pushing bot lane. Nobody can stop Bratz. This Yuzhong is not going to be able to do anything. He's 0-3. He cannot kill the Bratz. Oh. Oh, shit. What happened there to Selena? Lancelot fucking chase him from all the way to... All the way to South Africa. Let me see. Oh, okay. He did. He doesn't have a lot of mana. That's why he's struggling. Oh, okay. I see you, brother Kyrie. When the next Lord comes up, that's when the plays are going to start coming out. After the first Lord, there's always like quietness. It's always waiting. Okay, the next Lord's about to be up. Now they're going to try to make a play. What ROPH needs to do is bait it out or force people to actually go bot lane. Maybe Natalia needs to split push now instead of picking people off. It's really hard to pick off as Nat now. It's like towards late game. All these guys, a lot of these guys are really tanky now and hard to kill. And Barats needs to be on the team fight since he's the only tank they have and i think instead of natalia split pushing it's gonna be link split pushing because link could go to team fights really really fast he could just dash but from what it looks like here jay gets caught they're gonna commit on this tank again oh nice stun that's what's good about lunox this is why lunox is so good because when you coordinate with your teammates knowing that okay i'm about to freaking commit to this guy lunox is just ready with a dark form so just the burst is so good with lunox and then afterwards if they're chasing you just light form away and you're good Oh, that was not a good decision from JP. This is something that Kurt really liked doing. Never try to go for a Ruby, man. He's just gonna fuck you up. He went in on Ruby and then he gets flicker hooked by Iaknu. Yeah, never try to go in on Ruby because you're not gonna be able to burst her and plus she's just gonna sustain anyways. This is a really close game. Both teams are really good, by the way. They haven't done anything stupid. Okay, Kyrie made one mistake. JP made two mistakes now that I've noticed. 
two two big mistakes. Dilar made one mistake at mid lane right here. Everything else was kind of okay. So let's see what happens here. Kyrie going in on a Barats. <laughs> That's why they lost. It's the Barats, man. Knowing that they have to defend, they could burst out this Lord pretty easily. There you go. Wow, look at that burst from... Is that Lunox? Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if that's Lunox or Ling, but that, that damage on Jawhead, man. Jawhead falls off late game as a tank. Nice phantom execution from Lancelot though. Wow, perfect. To be honest with you, the decision here from ROPH to fight this is bad. They got what they came for, they should just reset lanes. There's really no need to fight because they already won the trade. But instead of backing off, like all five members are alive and they're like, we're safe, man. Let's just back off, wait for the Lord, reset lanes. They ended up being greedy and just burst out Jawhead. They got the kill. But at what cause? There's really no need to fight. Because of that, two of their members got picked off with the Lord being spawned already. They won't be able to benefit from this Lord as much as they should. Right? Because there's only three members to support this Lord. Compared to if you had five members, it'll be a different story. Now, the game is gonna prolong even longer. Because ROPH wanted to commit after getting the Lord. Obviously, there's no more inhibitor tower here. So they need to wave clear the super minions on the other lanes and then kill the Lord afterwards. So let's see how Onik will do this. Look, it's just a free clear on Lord. Because they have three members. They don't have any members. These guys just spawned. And surprisingly, Nat was able to split push. Let's see what happens here. So Lancelot went to bot lane to clear this Lord understandable and Kagura was checking the bush if Nat was there and I think Nat is gonna go try to go for this tower yeah he did and he got it wow so he still got it Kagura misses the ulti so nice play from JP so now what's gonna happen is ROPH they just need to freeze lane and they win this was not even a close match it might look like a close match but Onic PH they're kind of just hoping for a one last team fight they need to turn a team fight around that's what they're hoping for but overall like ROPH just dominated if you think about it ROPH dominated not dominated but they were at an advantage the whole time so look what do you do with Barats? Nothing. He even has immortality, so even after he dies, he's still gonna kill you. Yeah, nothing's gonna happen until the Lord is spawned. Unless you're face checking like this. So this is good from Aura. Ruby uses the hook on one guy, by the way, with the Lunox light form, by the way. Let's check that out again. Yapnu, light form. Oh, he thought that Lunox had dark form, but he just switched light form. But still, Yapnu, nevertheless. I don't think that was a good engage on a Lunox with light form. Because of that, he dies. See it right there. Hades gets straight. Oh my god, he got so lucky. Nice dodge right there. Nice sidestep on the uh, flame shot. Look at Lancelot though. Fuck. Oh, Kyrie. He's trying his best. That's it. I think that's it. Kagura could still wave clear with Yuzhong, but it's gonna be really hard. They should be able to get this mid lane in him. And I think they can end it here. Yuzhong is too underfed. Yuzhong didn't do anything the whole game. Wow, I cannot believe they shut down Dilar this well. Oi! Hate making the plays though. Look at him. He's trying his best, really. In summary, Greed kind of carried the team early game and then late game, Barats carried the team. We didn't really see like flashy Hades Ling, right? It was not flashy. He was just there to kind of split push and, you know, secure kills. Same with Lunox. Lunox is there to secure kills. That's their job. The playmaking came from Greed from ROPH. The draft went to ROPH for this one. I did say it was a 50-50, but just the Brats, man. Even after the nerf, Brats is still ban worthy and pick worthy, and nobody picked it until that last pick. Hate played really well for Onik. Dilar underperformed this last game, by the way. Iaknu fucked up that last team fight. They needed to make a play before the Lord spawns, and I think that's what Iaknu was trying to go for. He was trying to get the Lunox, but then it was a Lunox with light form, so that's the hard part. Jay was quiet, but it's not his fault because it could have been Akai. Like, you know what I mean? Instead of Jawhead, it could have been Akai. I think Akai would have been better, to be honest with you. Or a different tank instead of Jawhead. Because Jawhead, after early game, he falls off really, really hard. Kyrie made one misplay, but other than that, he played well. Throughout the game, he played well. So Hate and Kyrie did the best in Onik. While on RPH, it was Greed and Kilowash. JP was kind of there to, how do you say this? Ambush and assassinate. He did his job, but most of the playmaking was from Greed. 
That's why I'm putting more on the credit on greed. But overall, very well played from Aura. I still have a lot of, um, you know, how do you say this? Expectations for Onyx since they do have a lot of talent. If Dilar performed a little better. I, I haven't seen Dilar like this in a very long time. I'm a little disappointed, but I know he's way better than this. He's, for me, the best offlane in MPLPH. If he played just a little bit better and made that much more presence, Onyx would have won. I would say Onik would have won, but the Yuzhong was kind of negated this whole fight, this whole match. It was kind of just nothing, didn't do much. So yeah, hopefully you guys like that analysis. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like. Um, Tell me what you guys like better. Do you guys want my webcam off? You guys want it on? So um, yeah, that's it. Um, Hit the notification bell and I'm out guys. Peace.